don't look at other men or whatever, you know what your sexuality is long before you ever experienced sex. Because you would never experience sex if you didn't know what your sexuality was. You have to be attracted to someone in order to experience a sexual encounter, a, one that you want to be in. I'll back that up. One that you want to be involved in. Um, so, therefore, uh, yeah, they've, they've, they've done it right. Ezekiel 16. Who wants to read that for me? Ezekiel 16, 48 to 52. As I live, says the Lord, neither your sister Sodom nor her daughters have done as you and your daughters have done. Look, this was the equity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, fullness of food, and abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. And they were naughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw fit. Samaria did not commit half of your sins, but you have multiplied your abominations more than they, and have justified your sisters by all the abominations which you have done. You have judged your sisters, bear your own shame also, because the sins which you committed were more abominable than theirs. They are more righteous than you. Yes, be disgraced also, and bear your own shame, because you're justi you justified your sisters. So we find out exactly what the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah was, or the sin of Sodom. And it listed right there uh, in 49, it starts, the sin of your sister Sodom. Um, and when they, they personified Sodom, they made it a woman, they made it and they said that she has daughters. They're just making it more personal. We're still talking about the city. This isn't some woman with children. This is the city and the people, the inhabitants of the city. It says that they were arrogant. That's the first one. It says that they were overfed and unconcerned, which means they had gluttony. Um, it says they did not help the needy, didn't help the poor. They were inhospitable. They were haughty and did detestable things before me. They were prideful. It says, um, therefore, I did away with them as you have seen. So it lists the sins of Sodom. Nowhere in that list just now. If the main reason, and this is the thing, preachers today, the, the conservative church today, <coughs> the main reason Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed was due to homosexuality. If the main reason was homosexuality, why is it not listed in Ezekiel 16? If that was the main reason, I would think that when I turn to Ezekiel 16 and, and it's saying, this is the Lord speaking, now this was the sin of your sister Sodom, I would expect to see something about they slept with other men or they were trying to have sex with the angels or they were, it would have something to do with that story that we just read, if that was the reason for their destruction. It says their reasons were arrogance. I don't know about y'all, but a lot of the same people that are telling us that we're going to hell due to our homosexuality, that's plain arrogant right there. Overfed and under concern. Now y'all, I'm sitting here and, and, and I, I don't mean to be uh, disrespectful, but I myself am, am um, I'm guilty of the overfed and unconcerned portion. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I have let myself continue to have the gluttony spirit and don't care about it at certain points. That's something that I'm praying on, like we talked about before, praying on and asking God for some help. But, and so that takes away the unconcern, but overeating is also a sin. We are in this United States, the, the, the worst nation. We're the most obese nation. And yet, and most of us are sitting up in a church somewhere talking about other people going to hell while we doing the same things that this city was destroyed for. Talk about, no, it's, it's gay folk. <laughs> no, it's the 30 pounds that you have too. That was that same thing right now in April 16th. So don't point at me. If you're not willing to take on what your portion is, because it says it's right here, that that was a part of it, and the fact that they did not help the poor and needy. It, that, that is the list right there. It says that they were haughty, that they were, they were prideful. I don't know 
about y'all, it's starting to sound like the traditional church to me a little bit. It's starting to sound real familiar to some of the things that they pointed us about. One thing, but yet they are taking on all of these different characteristics right here, and they did detestable things before me. Therefore, I did away with them. And it talks about Samaria. It says that Samaria has not committed half of your sins. And they did, and you have done more detestable things than even they, and, but you make them seem righteous. So the things that he's condemning these people about, and we're going to read about what he is condemning um, this city about, but they make them seem righteous. And you have justified their sin by what you're doing, because you judged them. You have now justified them of their sin. So um, what does... Uh, what is the sin described in Ezekiel? So in order to do that, we have to read all of Ezekiel 16. Because he's basically letting them have it. Letting them have it for the sins that they're committing. Saying it's much worse than what Solomon ever did. Much worse than what Samaria ever did. So Ezekiel 16 an allegory of unfaithful Jerusalem. I'll go ahead and start reading. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, confront Jerusalem with her detestable practices and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says to Jerusalem. Your ancestry and birth were in the land of the Canaanites. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. On the day you were born, your cord was not cut, nor were you washed with water to make you clean, nor were you rubbed with salt or wrapped in clothes. No one looked on you with pity or had compassion enough to do any of these things for you. Rather, you were thrown out into the open field, for on the day you were born, you were despised. Then I passed by and saw you kicking about in your blood. And as you lay there in your blood, I said to you, live. I made you grow like a plant on the, of the field. You grew up and developed and became the most beautiful of jewels. Your breasts were formed and your hair grew, and, who, and you who were naked and bare. Later I passed by, and when I looked at you and saw that you were old enough for love, I spread the corner of my garment over you and covered your nakedness. I gave you my solemn oath and entered into a covenant with you, declares the, so the solemn Lord, and you became mine. So right there, God is describing a scenario. What he's trying to say is, he's, again, personifying Jerusalem. Jerusalem was like the underdog. Jerusalem was like dirty city. Like he said, they were just kicking around. Just nobody cared about them. God said, I cared about you. When nobody else wanted you, I wanted you. 